is it a little today? Normal. 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 What did I tell you about answering questions of how you are and saying, I'm normal. I'm sleepy. Okay, I'm sleepy. That's better than I'm normal. Nobody's normal. <laughs> Everybody's unique. Everybody's different. Nobody's normal. Yeah, you shouldn't say that. Doesn't matter who asks you how you're doing. You should always say something about how you're feeling or how things are going. If not much has changed and everything is the same and everything is kind of normal, you can just say, I'm fine. Not much is different. Not much has changed. Something like that. But not I'm normal. Ah. Now, where is Milo? Is she going to be late again today? Hmm. I haven't got any feedback to yet. No feedback yet, huh? Hmm. Something wrong with your camera, Sleepy? I have my new pink shirt on. You like it? I think it's purple. Pink. Salmon purple. pink. Oh, something's wrong no, with your camera. purple. Something's wrong with your camera. This is beautiful hot pink. You didn't know I'm from Africa? Oh, my God. You're lying. There's something wrong with your camera. You should be able to tell just looking at me. <laughs> I'm lying. Me? Lie? Never. Well, maybe sometimes. Just little white lies. Why do they say little white lies? How come they don't say little black lies or little yellow lies or little brown lies or little green lies or little pink lies? Why is it always little white lies? I don't know. Me too. I don't know. I'm going to have to research that and find out what the origin of that is, where that came from. Hmm. Yeah, I think next week we do our test. We'll do caught on camera. I think that was good, talking about those photos from the early 1900s and uh, Einstein and, 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 and some of those amazing photos that have been caught in history. Yeah. Where's, where's Paris? Paris? Where's Paris? It's downstairs. Downstairs. You only have one stair in your house? No. No, you have several stairs. So we have to say upstairs or downstairs unless you only have one step. Sometimes at the front door, you only have one step. So you can't call them stairs. But in the house, to go from one floor to another floor, usually there's several foot stairs. Otherwise, it'd be really hard to get there if there was only one. You have to be a giant. Or you'd have to be that guy in the in the Russian tail and long legs. All right. Well, I guess there's no point in waiting for her. If she comes, she comes. If she doesn't come, she doesn't come. So we're going to be on our lesson nine today. <clears throat> now, I called it high five because it's all about how people meet each other and how they greet each other in different places around the world. And that's what we're going to be reading about, how they say hello in France and Japan and, and other countries and how, what's popular and what's kind of weird and what's that. So with that being said, let's go through some of our vocab. What do we call the surface of the earth? Tectonic plates. <laughs> but what are tectonic ground? plates made of? Yeah, the ground. Right, the ground is usually not, we don't call it soil, even though technically they're all part of dirt, they're all part of earth. But usually the ground is like the harder one you build on the ground. Ground is usually where you put the streets. Soil is usually where it's really damp and really fertile and moist, moist, damp, same thing. But soil is usually where we grow food. I don't think food would grow very well on this landscape. And I don't think it would grow very well on this street either, on this road or this trail, this path. I guess it would be a road, a dirt road. But yeah, ground. It's a bit confusing. But soil is definitely what we grow our food in. That's full of worms and really healthy for growing food. 
what do we call land like this where it's really, really, really dry and you can't grow any food? Some, some farmers sometimes, like this happened in Australia not long ago, and it happens different places all over the world. But at one point, it was fertile. It was very good and rich for growing food. But then it doesn't rain for many, many, many months. Or one year, it has a really low amount of rain, and everything gets really dry. What do we call that? What kind of a, it's not really a season. It's like more of an event that happens. Drought. A drought. Yeah. Route drought. This looks like this area has gone through quite the drought. But it's pretty amazing how these trees are still growing. I wonder if this is a real picture or a CGIF. I don't know. Ground. Don't forget your ND. Say it again. Ground. Yeah. Grow, ground, ground, ground. Good, 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 good. Where's my annotate? Right in the middle of my screen. Put that over here. There we go. <laughs> One nothing, Lily. <laughs> weapons. Yeah, I'm sure they got to be weapons. But where is it in my book here? Mm, why in the world would we have weapons and greetings? You don't usually use weapons when you meet people unless they are the enemy. Oh, yeah. In the past, people shook hands to find out if someone was carrying a weapon. Yeah. If you go back hundreds of years ago and a thousand years ago, Everybody was carrying a sword or a knife or a bow and arrow or an axe or something. So sometimes if you met people on the trails, on the paths, which were very, very dangerous, you would often go to shake hand to see if maybe they had a knife in their sleeve or they would move their jacket or their coat or something to try to make sure that they didn't have a weapon. So you were not caught off guard. Yeah. Wow. Look at all these machine guns and guns on the wall. If that's real, that's quite the, 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 the collection of guns. Holy macaroni. I didn't know they had that many different guns. <laughs> what do you call this one flying through the air? Mm, I don't know what it is. Mm, they're like a rocket, of course, but they're called a missile. Missile, if plural, missiles, or no, missiles, missiles, missiles. I think you could say it both ways. A missile. It's coming to. Yeah. What kind of greeting is this? Comes for the origin is Japanese, I'm sure. It's still very common in this martial art, which we'll talk about after, because I used to do this when I was young. Bow. Yeah. Now, 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 you're right. A bow is something we tie around our neck, around a present, a, a bow, a bow and arrow. But this is pronounced differently. Can you, yeah, you look at the phonics there. This is pronounced bow. Yeah, bow. Bow. If you bow at 15 degrees, it's respect. If you bow at like 45 degrees, it's really really showing respect and there's different degrees on what each bow means and depends on who you're greeting people bow as a sign of respect when you bow you show the back of your neck to another person in the past people only bowed to bowed if they trusted the other person not to kill them <laughs> Bowing used to be common in Europe, common in Europe, and it's still common in Asia. Mm, okay. Yeah, because a lot of times they bow, but they, they still look at you when they bow. <laughs> because, uh, of course, a long time ago, it was very common that someone would take their sword and psh, cut your head off. <laughs> it was crazy in the past. Just crazy how violent everything was. Oh, I'm glad we live in this age. So much nicer now. So much peace, more peaceful. Hmm. A bow. No, not crazy. There goes the girl again. What do you call that? Like we, we know this to be, yeah, okay. 
and we know this to be no, not okay, wrong. But nod? what is it? Yeah, it's called a nod. To nod your head from side to side, or usually up and down, to nod. Move, yeah, up and down. To move one's head up and down repeatedly, or even one time is okay. Like you accept, it's okay. Nod, nod your head. I forgot to ask you what, what is this? All of them, Kung Fu, Jiu Jitsu, Ninjutsu, Taekwondo, they're all called martial arts. But this is one of the famous ones from Japan. What do they do in Japan? Sounds like karaoke. <laughs> Karate? Karate. Yeah. Karate, I think is how they say it. English karate. And I think he's crazy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think so. He looks crazy. Doesn't look normal. The part that covers your arms. What are the parts that cover your arms? What is the dog biting on that suit? That protective suit when you're training guard dogs and police dogs? Because otherwise they're going to bite you. It's going to be like, ah! So this protects. Sleeve? Sleeve. That's right. A sleeve or sleeves. Vz, if you have two, of course. Most people have two sleeves. But it is a sleeve. The dog is biting the sleeve. She is checking the sleeve. She's got crazy nails, fingernails. You like nails like that? No. You never had your nails all painted up fancy, fancy? No, I haven't. Even at Halloween? Yeah. Ah, someday, maybe? No. <laughs> Do you like to wear dresses or you rather wear jeans? I rather jeans. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. What kind of dog is that? Brown. It's brown. A round dog? A brown dog. No, it's not a poodle. It's not a lab. It's not a Doberman Pinscher. It's not what kind of that. No, it's, it's not a chihuahua. It's not a golden retriever. It's a German shepherd. This is one of my favorite dogs in the whole world. A shepherd, a German shepherd. Why? Why? Because they make great family dogs. They, they're very protective for children. Um, they're very protective in your house. They're very smart. You can train them. That's why the police use a lot of German shepherds. You could really train them to do amazing things. Um, they're very strong. They're big. They are what they call, they're what they call a canine. So they are a man stopper. They can stop criminals from coming in your house because they're strong enough. And I think they're beautiful. I love their long fur and, and the way they're built. Um, I've had three. One, two. Well, no, okay. I'm, I'm, I, when I was a little kid, we had two dogs, but they were a mix. But then later I had a shepherd in Ottawa, and then I had a shepherd in Calgary when, when I lived in, <clears throat> no, both, both in Ottawa. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Turkey? Yeah, it is Turkey, but I couldn't get a good picture of Turkey here. So I'm going to have to pause this and draw it for you. Now, where's my annotates? Ah, where did you go? Come back here, you. You macaroni. There we go. Yeah. The country in southeastern Europe, right? So all of, this is the southeastern side of Europe. Um, I don't know if you can tell where everything is here. This is the Mediterranean. This is Egypt. This is Africa. That's Spain. That's France. This here, the boot. Is Italy. Uh, uh, this is Greece down here. But the only good picture I could find was this one with the green map. Because this was the Ottoman. The Ottoman Empire about 500, 600 years ago. 
this was one of the big, big empires on the planet. They were called the Ottoman. And this is all the territories the Ottoman controlled, where it's green. So they were really, really big. They're the ones that finally finished all the Romans back in the 1940, 1400s. So almost 600 years ago. Um, they, they beat, they sieged, they beat the final, final, final Roman stronghold, which was a city right here. Right here. See, there's a river. You see that little orange line in the middle? Can you see that? Is it too small? I don't know how big your monitors are, but there is a line right through here. Okay. Now, mostly on this side, mostly on this side is the city of Istanbul. But see, there's the river right here. That river is the river that goes right through here. And that brings us to the, 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 the Black Sea, I think they call this. I think this is called the Black Sea. I'm sure it's the Black Sea. Very famous. Right now, the war that's happening with Russia and Ukraine, right? This is Crimea. That's Russia. Ukraine is here. Russia is over here. And they're fighting all along these borders in here right now. That's where the war right now in Europe is. But this is a very famous, a very important strategic place, right? Because it's the only place that connects this big sea to the Mediterranean and to the oceans, right? It's the only way to get in and out through this place. So it's very strategic. And when the Romans ruled for 1,500 years, this was their big, strong fort. And it was called Constant Constantinopolis. Um, and this was part of the Roman, the Roman dynasty. But it was the last city they had after they lost everything else after a after thousand years. And the Ottoman were the new big boy on the block. And they came and they defeated Constantinopolis in the 1400s. And the city became Istanbul. And then eventually the Ottoman Empire fell apart too. All these countries got independent. Saudi Arabia got independent. Uh, Afghanistan, all these countries. And in the end, Turkey was, is just this part here. Something like that. So this is Turkey, the country of Turkey. Now, Turkey is, well, it's very strategic, of course, but half or not half, the city of Istanbul is in Europe because of the continental shelves. So the city is in Europe, even though it's still part of, that's where the country stops, not at the river, stops here. So the city belongs to Turkey. This is Asia. So they're like Russia. Part of the country is in Europe and part of the country is in Asia. Russia is the same. Moscow is on the European continent, but 80% of Russia is in Asia. Here you can see like 95% of Turkey is in Asia, but not the capital city. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. How that works. There we go. Turkey. Cappadocia. I'm going to wait till this gets right back where we were. Remember these cities that are built underground? We talked about this in the class before. You guys remember that? They built all their homes in the rocks and in the caves. And All right. Cappadocia. Remember this one where they have whole towns underground and homes built inside the mountains? Do you remember we had a lesson and we talked about this place? Yeah, that place, Cappadocia, a very amazing historic place, is right in the center, somewhere, well, maybe a little lower, somewhere around here, in the center of Turkey. So Turkey is a beautiful place to go visit. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of amazing places to visit. Very, very amazing. I would love to go visit. I've even thought. Maybe go teach English in Istanbul for like one year. Just, just something different. Okay. Sounds cool, yeah? No? Would you like to do something like that?
live in different countries for a few years? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and you learn so much. I, uh, I definitely, but I have to wait until all this COVID stuff stops and there's not all these restrictions and all this crazy stuff. So I'm probably not going to do anything for a year or two. But yeah, the country of Turkey, pretty amazing country. Yummy, yummy, yummy. What is that? Kind. Yeah, there were so many different kinds or what's another word for kinds? Types. Types, yeah. Kinds and types. I'm not even keeping track of the vocab. Types is the word we were looking for. Kinds and types, right? Different kinds of hellos, different types of hellos, different kinds and types of greetings, which we'll be talking about. And what are these plants? You know what we call them? Spiky, spiny ones. They usually grow in deserts. Cactus. Cactus, yeah. And actually, if you're ever stuck in a desert, that's what you want to find is a cactus. Because if you actually cut a piece of the cactus off the side, the skin, and then you turn it sideways and you poke it into the side of the cactus, it'll fill up with water. Inside the cactus, that has water that you can drink. So it's a great way to save your life. If you can find a cactus. <laughs> and what are all these beautiful, lovely things on the board? Cheese. Oh, yeah, baby. Cheese. I love cheese. Oh, I love cheese. This is one of my favorite cheddar cheese for sandwich. This over here is Rockford cheese. It's really strong and it's really, really expensive. This is a brie cheese. You can, it's really soft. You can take it with a knife and just spread it on a hot bun. Oh, it's so good. And then this one over here is the one you scrape. It's Parmesan cheese that you put on pasta and spaghetti. This one is like a spicy cheese, but I don't remember the name of this cheese. But I love all of the cheeses. I don't think there's any cheese I don't love. I love them all. I would marry every one of them. I love cheese. <laughs> I'm a cheese lover. That's why I got to go to the Mediterranean. That's tattoo? where the Nicholas cheese. It is like a tattoo. But look, look at the design. Oh, is it design? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, but th okay. Pictures? This is very kind of like specific to a country. Where would you find people? India. In India. It's very, very common in India. Now, where, where do you, Cuba, what is Cuba famous for? One of the things. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah Cubans make the world's best Cuban cigars. And they have a really nice flavor and they're big and you can smoke them. And the thing about a cigar, you notice she's not taking a puff and bringing it in. No, no, no. She doesn't inhale. You don't inhale. Like you see people smoke cigarettes here in Vietnam or TV. They... They suck it in their lungs and then they blow it out, right? And that's why it's so bad for you. The nicotine that goes into your lungs is bad. Long term, it causes a lot of problems. But cigars, you don't inhale. You just suck it into your mouth and then you blow it out. But it creates a really nice flavor and taste. And um, that's how you smoke cigars. But the Cuban cigars are famous. And then, of course, China and different places. Tea is very, very popular in certain places. Almost traditional. So just like your fancy dresses that you wear in, uh, in Tet holidays, the dress, how could we describe the, the traditional dress? What's another word for it? Media? I don't know. Starts with a C. A tradition or widely accepted way of behaving or doing something that is specific to a particular society, place, or time. It is mm, to do this here, different from other places. It is special, <laughs> kind of cultural. Well, that's a really good guess, too. But no, I don't know if I've seen it or I was told. But I, I, I think when you come into Vietnam, it warns, the government warns foreigners not to disrespect or, or mock or make fun of any of the, of the Vietnamese people. 
the traditions or what? Customs. Customary. Yeah, things that are customary in certain places. Every country has some of its own customs, how they do things. You know, another one, another custom here in Vietnam, but not every country, is you always take your shoes off before you go into a house. That's a custom. Yeah, but not every country. It's strange for foreigners to go into a school or go into a classroom and everything, and we know it's dirty, but yet we have to take our shoes off? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Why do I want to take? I put my shoes on for a reason. I'll take my shoes off when I go home. <laughs> not when I'm out in public, but yeah. And you go to a shop and you want to go shopping and buy clothes. And then at the door, you're supposed to take your shoes off before you go in to look at things you want to buy. What? No, I keep my shoes on. Thank you. <laughs> but that's a custom, right? You're used to it. Custom. Now, something you often do the same in a lot of places or for a lot of people. We don't really have much in, <clears throat> we don't like the same things. We argue often. Smith is a very <clears throat> name in USA, just like Nguyen is a very <clears throat> name in Vietnam. They both like fishing. They have something. Popular? Mm, popular is something many people like to do. This is more like same, same. Normally? Mm, normally is habitual. Sometimes you'll see a boy and a girl when they become boyfriend and girlfriend. One of the reasons is because they like a lot of the same things. So they would say, we have a lot. Similar? Yeah, like that. We like watching movies together. We like the same foods. We like the same TV shows. So we get along really well. We have a lot. In, we've had this word before, I'm sure. They both like having, they both like fishing, but they don't like doing anything else together. This is the only thing they have in <laughs> common. Yeah. Things that are the same. We've had this word before, right? There are a lot of people that have Nguyen in their name in Vietnam, right? Nguyen, N-G-U-Y-E-N. That's like apparently the most popular or mo not, maybe not most popular, but the most common name in Vietnam. Smith is uh, the most common family name in the USA, right? Again, common. The things that you have in similarities with your friends, those are the things you have in common. Maybe there's some people you don't have very much in common at all, which means you probably don't hang out or spend much time together because you don't like the same things. Common. Now, this one's a tough one. I use this in political words too, but this is to... Okay, kneel, of course, kneel is to get down, is to bow. Prostrate, newly. What, uh, Milo? Prostrate. Oh, I don't understand. It is kneeling, but this is extreme kneeling, like worship or submission, right? Um, kneel, kneel before me is, is you get on your knees. And you bow, right? That's a normal... Can you flex? Uh, what? <laughs> Not going to tell me? <laughs> okay. I'm sure you don't know this word. I've only learned it recently. I was curious what it was because I kept hearing it in politics. Oh, he just keeps mm to that guy. Or he just keeps mm to that party. I'm like, what is that word? I had heard it before, but I never knew what it was. It's called kowtow, kowtow. And you might hear it more in the future. It's not a word I heard much growing up. I don't remember the word. I, I think I only learned it this year. Kowtow just doesn't seem that familiar to me. But it's like kneeling and touch the ground with your forehead in worship or submission. You do this to a master. You do this to someone who you, you totally obey. You do this like the Muslims here. 
uh, they they practice Islam and they do this kneeling to Mecca and towards Mecca, which is in Saudi Arabia, which means they are bowing to Allah, their God, right? Um, it's called kowtow. It's the most extreme of worship or, and they do it in karate too. See how she's going all the way down like that, like giving respect to her, her sensei, her, her karate master or to the sport, to the tradition. Easy to say, but you got to remember it, kowtow. So in politics, uh, they use the word kowtow as another slang, another word for kissing someone's beep beep. You know what that means? You know, you're always doing something because you're trying to get something from them or you're trying to be their favorite. And people say, stop kissing his or her beep beep. You're always doing everything for that person. So instead of saying that, they say, oh, stop your kowtowing. You're such a kowtow. Uh-oh, he's playing situation? with some dangerous word, dangerous, yeah, situation, dangerous waves. Yeah, when you go to the beach and you see the waves that are as big as you, you, you don't go swimming because the, the water comes over, but then underneath the water pulls you back out to the sea. It's called an undertow, and it's really dangerous. A lot of people drown because of that, because the currents pull them back out to the sea and they can't swim back very difficult it happened to me once i was really lucky i had to be rescued from a lifeguard because i was playing in too many big waves and it didn't matter what i tried to do and swim 90 percent of my body's underwater so even though my head was out of the water the water underneath the waves kept pulling my body further and further and further back out to sea and i was like uh oh i'm in big trouble very dangerous if the water is rough, don't swim in it because you don't. The water is going the opposite way underneath. Very dangerous. Yeah. And these guys, firefighters, our team is trained to deal with difficult situations. He is in a dangerous situation now. He may have a hard time trying to get out of that water. A set of things that are happening and the conditions that exist at a particular time and place. Now, situations could be a good thing sometimes. Sometimes you get offered two great jobs. Oh, this is a good situation to be in. Hmm, I like this. <laughs> you know. It's funny. I realize when my in my working years, in my twenties and my and my thirties, sometimes I like to travel a lot, and I lived in many different cities around Canada. And of course, after Canada, I moved to Asia and I've lived in cities in Asia. But I, I, I remember sometimes I was, I was really experienced in the restaurant in industry, waitressing, waitering, bartending, managing, pretty much everything in the restaurant I could do. So I had a really good resume. So it was very easy for me to go to a town, go to a resort city, go to a city, and within a day, I'd bring out my resume to a few places and I'd basically get offered a job at every place I applied. Everybody wanted me to work for them because of my, my experience. Um, and uh, I remember thinking then, because I, I remember at one time I was thinking, every time I pick and I get multiple choices, I thought it was a good situation, but it seemed like I always picked the wrong place to work because it never worked out long term. Eventually, something bad happened, uh, or I quit, or, or whatever happened. Um, but then I realized it's because having a job is a bad situation. The only time I've ever been happy working is when I work for myself, and I'm the boss. Something I learned over the years. Lily, situation. Sit chew. Yeah, sit chew. Chew, 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 chew the bubblegum. Chewation. Mimi Milo. Situation. Situation. Situation, yeah. Oh, look at that beautiful bird. I think that is one of the most beautiful birds in the world. But you guys are a little... um superstitious about this bird in Vietnam, I hear. What is it when you move your hands, your arms, your body, 
to express an idea or feeling. Often, you can tell your friend what you're thinking or what you want without saying a word. <clears throat> Sometimes your mom and dad can just look at you a certain way, and you know what they mean. They don't have to say it. What is that? What is that kind of body language? What is it called? Yes, sir. Yeah, gestures. To give a gesture. Yeah, usually if a boy winks at you, it usually means they like you, right? Or if someone... They're not happy with the way you were driving. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, there's a lot of gestures that can be used so that we don't know or that we know exactly what they mean without anyone saying something. So what's the gesture of the small guy here with the glasses? What's happening with him? What do you know just happened? Um, he's thinking and then he has an idea. Yeah, you can tell without him saying a word. He just came up with an idea about something. That's right. Now, the big picture, I think he's just explaining something. We don't know what the content is, but he's using his hands. And that is still a form of gesture. So one of the most common things we do in gestures is we use our hands, right? You can almost have a conversation just using your body and your hands. And the other person can probably understand most of what you're saying, especially if you know them. Just and another ch -ch -ch -er. gesture. 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 Yeah. Lily, one more time. Gesture. 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 Yeah, it's a bit hard to roll, but good. Good, 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 good. <laughs> this is a little bit of Trevor making things a little difficult. <laughs> what are they saying? What do you say to someone when you meet them? You don't say nothing to anybody when you meet them? Hello. Good hello. Day. Yeah, hello. It's like a greeting, right? But what's the greeting in French? Hmm. Very popular. They're quite famous. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour, yeah. Bonjour is the English pronunciation of a French word. That's right. Bonjour. That's how my dad says it too. Bonjour. <laughs> but that's not how I say it and not how my mom says it because my mom is French. And both of my mom, my, my biological mom and my adopted mom, they're both French. They're all Acadian French speakers. Um, so do you know how to say it in French? Yeah. O-N is en, not on. It's not bon. It's bon. And then it's jour. Bonjour. Can you say that, Lily? Bonjour. Bonjour. No, it's not bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. Bonjour. Jour. Not jour. 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 <laughs> like jambon, a ham in French. You have a lot of French words in your, in your Vietnamese language. Mimi Milo. Bonjour. Jour. No, jour. Jour. <laughs> Another hello. But this is the Spanish hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> it's hello. not hello. What how do they say hello in Spain? Even Mexico. Hola. 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 Yeah. Hola. 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 Hello. Hello. Hola. Hola. <laughs> hello, hola, bonjour. What's your? How do you say hello in Vietnamese? Sinchao. Oh yeah, sinchao. I knew that. Stupid me. Sinchao, of course. And Chinese? <laughs> Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Yeah. What about Japan? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. What about Korea? What is it, Milo? Inaseo. 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 Four syllables to say hello. Oh, my God. 
That's crazy. Si Maceo, right? Oh, an- an- Anya. 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 Oh my God, that's way too long. I'm not going to Korea. No, forget it. <laughs> what about in Russia? Rasputin. Huh? Rasputin. Rasputin. Russia, Rasputin. I can't remember. Um, I forget. I, I don't know, so that's why I'm asking you guys if anybody knows. But I think it's something simple. I think Pavel used to say it a lot in class. Yes is da. Da is yes. I can't remember. And there's another one. Oh, no, gracias. Gracias means thank you in Italian. So I wonder what hello in Italian is. I would make a good YouTube short even though it's not just English, but to teach it in English and then go through like a whole bunch of different hellos in different languages. That'd be cute. Okay. Here's another one. I know Czech. What's Czech? Uh, in the morning, you say Dob- uh, Dobre Rano. Dobre Rano? Dobre Rano is the good morning. Dobre okay. Dan is like I have a good day for all the different time in the day. Dobre Dan is have a Dobre good day. Dan. Dobreden. Dobreden. Okay. But not nothing for just hello. All right. So hola. Hola. So simple. <laughs> now, this is another greeting. I know a, a lot of us, I don't know who, I think it was some of the staff saying, I thought that meant give me a phone call. <laughs> and that's usually what it means in the West, too. When you go like this, it usually means call me. But that is a greeting in, where the heck is it again? Surf um, skateboarders use it a lot, too. Kind of like cool. Okay, I think I know where this comes from. I think it comes from, there's a different one in Hawaii. But surfers use this, too. It has another meaning. Mm, Sometimes known as hang loose, right on, like cool. A gesture with friendly intent often associated with Hawaiian and surf cultures. So surfers, skateboarders, it's very common. This is like really cool. Check it. See you later. Can be a hello or a goodbye. It is a, it is a gesture. The origins of the mm, Hawaii. Hang loose right on. Thank you. Things are great. Take it easy. All the friendly gestures is what it means. Someone does that to you is the opposite of the middle finger. <laughs> Total opposite. It's called a shaka. 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 Shaka greeting, Milo. Shaka greeting. Hmm. Shaka surfing, Lily. Again, this. My younger sister is so loud. I don't hear her. You can't hear it. I can hear it very well. <laughs> Only you. That's like the karaoke singers next door. Which little sister, Paris or the other one? Paris. Oh, Paris is so loud. Tell Paris to come and join the clash and, and I'll give her the shaka. All right. So we talked about, again, we're talking about greetings from different cultures and different countries. We already talked about um, customary customs. So the, a lot of these words are very similar, right? Traditions, customs. But this is something that you kind of go through to, to another part of your life. Maybe it's some kind of an offering. Maybe it's, some, maybe it's some kind of a ceremony you have to do before a wedding. Maybe it's before a war. Maybe it's before having a baby. Certain things and ways to do something. A set of actions or words performed in a regular way, often as part of a religious ceremony. It's called a ritual. And many people have rituals. Like sometimes it's what you do. Prefer. Like let's say you're, you're going to, you're a performer and you want to dance. Well, maybe you have this tradition. You have this ritual that every time before you, you, you go to a competition, you throw salt over your shoulder, you eat two oranges and one tablespoon of salt and you do 10 push-ups. <laughs> but you always do the same, 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 same thing every time before you, the game. That's a ritual too, 
All right, a set of actions or words performed. Ritual, Mimi Malo. Ritual. Ritual. Lily. Ritual. Paris. <laughs> is she still being noisy? Why is she being so noisy? She knows you have a class. Unbelievable. All right. Of events. One thing happens after another. A series of related Revolution. things. What, 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 what? Revelation? <laughs> no. Uh, then Evolve. Evolution. Evolution. Um, well, yeah, I found this picture under evolution. But evolution has to go through a series of what to change? Right? The first domino has to fall before the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Oh, what happened with the video? It doesn't. Ah, it's broken. It doesn't show the. The domino is falling down. Huh, weird. Um, yeah, well, from the time you're born to an adult to an old man, and then you die, and then someone's born, it's, it's the same for everybody. Well, unless you have a car accident or something. But the normal chain of life, pretty crazy when you think about how our life works. Yeah, apparently all mammals came from the ocean first. Some 650 million years ago, I think, is when that, that, era, that time, that era that came. And then from there, animals were formed. And from there, apes were formed. And lizards were formed. And that, 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 that. And eventually, all those human species a few million years in Africa started evolving. Even a word for sewing. What do you call each stitch that's perfect, 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 perfect all the way to the end? Now, though, I was trying to do like a mm of events. This kind of this had to happen before this happened, before that happened, before this all happened. I was trying to get sequence, a sequence, a sequence of events, a sequence of things that happened in a series. Right? This had to happen, then this had to happen, then this had to happen, then that had to happen, then that had to happen. A sequence of interest classes before you become a C1 speaker, right? You can't just do interest one and say, no, 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 I want to do interest 40. It doesn't work that way. You got to step by step. Sequence. Mimi Milo. Sequence. Sequence. Lily. Sequence. Yeah. Followed by another, followed by another. All right, another hello. From how are you? <laughs> how do they say? Hello in Hawaii. Are you searching? Are you searching? Yes. <laughs> Aloha. 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 <laughs> Aloha. Now we're going to go to one of the strangest countries in the world. Not many people go there. There is only a few million people that live there. It is pretty much 99% still jungle, just like the rainforest. It is a rainforest. Um, people still are very tribal. Uh, I don't think there's much internet or electricity in many of these places. They've also been, it's, it's also been said that amongst the tribes, some tribes still have cannibalism. Do you know cannibalism? No? Yes? Maybe? No. I'm going to take it as a no because nobody's answering me. Cannibalism is when people eat people. And of course, there you don't hear or see much of that anymore in today's world. But it wasn't that long ago that some places they, they practiced cannibalism where they ate other people from other tribes. This place is not quite that bad. Uh, and I don't have the facts. It's this green island north of Australia up here. Now, see how they some of them still dress like this. You can see how they're all their body paints and their feathers and everything. Um, now, I think cannibalism is, is something of the past there, too. I don't know how many different tribes there are on that island. And the island is divided in two here. I'm going to pause it real quick when we get close to the end here. Boom. I'm pause it there. 
going to make a line here. I'm not exactly sure where the line goes, but I'm, it's right around the middle somewhere. Um, basically, this is cut in two, I believe. Now, 50,000 years ago, this you could walk from here to Australia because the oceans were much, much lower Yeah, when the Ice Age was around, but the, the oceans rose 20, 30, 40 meters or whatever it was, and that's why the, there's so many islands now. But you see all the light blue. That means the water is not that deep. I mean, it's deep for us, but my point is that 40,000 years ago, 30, 50,000 years ago, you could walk from Vietnam, Malaysia, um, Sumatra, Java, and walk to these little islands. And apparently you could walk to Australia. That's how many people got there. Or maybe there was just little parts of water here and there that they could canoe across. And that's why they got divided 10,000 years ago and nobody knew there were people there. Same as North America, because it froze over. You could walk across the ice bridge. Anyway, down here, this side, this is part of Indonesia. Indonesia starts way up here and all these islands all the way to here. And then it goes all the way in here, Siloesi, and then up part of this Kalimantan and then down here to Singapore and then up here. All these islands, some 20,000 islands. I don't remember if it's 20,000 or 25,000. All these islands belong to Indonesia, except I think this island here, I think. East side of the island got its independence, and it's called East Timor. Now, that's another, another country by themselves. And this side is a country over here. Anybody know what it is? And again, I'm going to talk about the cannibalism. I've only heard stories that they've heard stories that this guy from this tribe uh, cheated on this guy's wife and then this guy killed him and they ate his body because it was a it was traditional or something, something, something. I know the past. I know that lots of the Polynesian islands, they did practice cannibalism and Papua New Guinea practice cannibalism. But what I understand now is pretty much everywhere around the world, they don't have it anymore. Okay. Anybody got this, uh, this, this, this country, this flag, these people starts with a P starts with Papa. <laughs> Papua New Guinea. That's the name of this very old fashioned tribal primitive place. Not many people go there. I had a friend when I lived in Jakarta over here. And I think his name was Steven. It was a long time ago. Big guy. But he used to go work in the western side here in still Indonesia on this side. Um, but they had to live in compounds, like fortified areas where they had to live because there was just too many problems with the local people, you know, the, the, the modern people like us. And the tribal people of the, of the forest, They're very different customs. And it was very easy to miscommunicate and fights could break out. And of course, them, they got their own laws. They fight with spears. So it's not really a good idea to mess with those people. So he said it was quite dangerous and he did not like going to work there. But he was an IT teacher and he was working for a gold mine or an oil mine or something. And he, they, they had to train their employees. So that was his job. So he would go there for four or five months come home for a couple of months, go there for a few months, they'd fly him in and out. He, he did it because he made really, really good money. But he, uh, he did not like going there, and he said it was very unsafe to live there for, as a foreigner. And I can believe it. It, it, it. Very different culture. They don't know anything about TVs and handphones, and they still live the way. They, I mean, imagine you're hanging out in the forest, and this guy walks up to you. I, I want some pizza. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I've never met anybody like that. Don't know if I ever will. But if I do, I hope it's in the city, not in the, not in the jungle. Almost finished here. and We'll take our break. This is the last one. Not too fancy, right? They, they went to the restaurant. They're just wearing normal shirts. Nothing special. They're having a meeting at work. But they're, they're just kind of dressed casually, suitable when you are with friends and family, but not in 
not for the office occasions. Like it's the opposite of having to wear a shirt and tie or wearing a school uniform. What is that when I have to wear a shirt and tie to go to work and you have to wear a uniform to go to school? That is what kind of dress? It's not casual. That would be formal. Yeah, you have to dress a certain way to go to these places. If you go to a formal party, you have to dress up with a suit or an, the woman has to have the, the, the dress and uh, weddings. You know, can't go to the wedding in your jeans or your ba bathing suit. <laughs> right? There, there, there's so, and sometimes you write a letter, right? You're writing a letter to your lawyer, your teacher, your professor. You know, you're not going to say, hey, man, what's going on? Ain't it a nice day? Well, that's really slang. It's not formal. So if it's not formal, it's not fit. Not fit. If it's the opposite of formal writing, formal dress, formal behavior, I guess, it would be what? Just put a prefix on it. It's like if I say if it's important, but it's not important, you would say unimportant. Unimportant or unimportant? Unimportant. Formal, informal. You write an email to your friend, that's informal. You write an essay to your professor, that's formal, right? There's different styles of writing, different styles of dress, code. Informal, Lily. Informal. Formal. Formal. Yeah. Formal. Mimi mi, 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 malo. Informal. Informal. Yeah. All right, mini mice. Uh, we're going to take our break. Then we'll go through our vocab list. Uh, again, we don't do the sentence challenge much at this level. We probably should do it more often, but we never have that much time. And then after that, we're going to pronunciation and comprehension reading. Break time! <laughs> 